I'm sorry for your loss. The world is full of plenty of good and honest people, but unfortunately we seem to also have more than our fair share of evil, twisted crime enthusiasts. Every time I started writing something, it went up higher. So I'm thinking that probably had the TV rig. Sometimes those unpleasant and terrifying individuals do the absolute worst stuff to their fellow humans and then eventually are caught and incarcerated. So, just for fun, and your eyeballs' enjoyment, we've gathered together some of the utter worst scrapings of the bottom of the dumpster juice gunk of humanity and put them in this list. Lucky old you. Enjoy! Here are the 20 most dangerous prison inmates in the world. Number 20. Ronnie O'Neill. In a crime so heinous that it's actually going to give you nightmares, Ronnie O'Neill III killed his girlfriend and daughter in March of 2018. Maybe this is the most dangerous convict in history. You decide and let me know in the comments down below. Known as the Riverview Murders, on the account of these crimes having taken place in Riverview, Florida, O'Neill shot his then ex-girlfriend Kenyatta Barron and then murdered his daughter, who was only nine years old, with an axe. I'm sorry for your loss. He also stabbed his eight-year-old son, Ronnie IV, but the little boy survived and was able to tell detectives that his father had shot his mother before he would be taken to the hospital to receive treatment for his wounds. Ronnie O'Neill III was ultimately caught and convicted of first-degree murder on two counts and of attempted first-degree murder, and was also charged with aggravated child abuse, arson, and resisting a law enforcement officer. Eventually, he would be sentenced to life in prison, and he was given three life sentences to run consecutively and without the possibility of parole. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Thomas Silverstein Known as the most violent prisoner in the world, Thomas Silverstein spent the last 42 years of his life behind bars in American prisons because of the crimes that he had committed whilst inside jail. He was convicted of four different murders while he had been imprisoned for his original crime of armed robbery, and in the end would be kept in solitary confinement for 36 years for killing a correctional officer at the Marion Penitentiary in Illinois. He would be described by authorities as a brutal killer and also known to be a former leader of the Aryan Brotherhood. And you know just what kind of man that likely made him into. In his final years, he would be held in a specially designed solitary confinement cell in ADX Florence Supermax. He was the longest held prisoner in solitary on the books of all America. Number 18. Shante Henderson Back in 2007, Shantae Henderson found herself placed on the FBI's most wanted list. This is not a good place to be, and in general, as we have seen, although not always, people on this list have done some extremely heinous stuff. Henderson had shot and killed DeAndre Parker in September of 2006 in Kansas City, Missouri. She had said that Parker had been in the process of attempting to run her over with a truck at the time. Come towards me again, which gave me no choice, but she would be placed on the most wanted list in March of 2007 and was actually apprehended that very same day after having spent months on the run. The judge in the court case had then acquitted Henderson of murder, but she was found guilty of manslaughter and placed on parole but later pulled over and found in possession of narcotics and a firearm, both of which are against the conditions of her sentence and she would then be put in prison for 17 years. Number 17. The Birdman of Alcatraz The Birdman of Alcatraz is a fascinating figure in American history who captured the imagination of the public with his unique story. Contrary to popular belief, the Birdman's real name was not Birdman, but rather Robert Franklin Stroud. His nickname came from his passionate interest in birds during his time in prison. Born in 1890, Stroud began his life as a troubled individual involved in criminal activities. In 1909, he would be sentenced to prison for manslaughter, and his life took a dramatic turn when he would be transferred to the infamous Alcatraz Island in 1942. While incarcerated there, he discovered a newfound passion for birds 
and began studying them, becoming an expert in avian diseases and their treatment. Despite being denied access to birds at Alcatraz, he had managed to acquire a canary and a sparrow, which he kept as pets in his cell. Stroud would author two influential books on birds, which gained him recognition within the scientific community. Interestingly, Stroud's story gained popularity through the 1962 film Birdman of Alcatraz, which starred Burt Lancaster. However, that movie took several artistic liberties and presented a more sympathetic portrayal of Stroud than what was reality. Although Stroud achieved a level of fame due to his bird studies, he still remained in prison until 1959 when he was transferred to a federal medical facility due to health concerns. He spent the remainder of his life there until his death in 1963. The Birdman of Alcatraz's legacy is a blend of intrigue, bird expertise, and the romanticized image that was portrayed in popular culture. But like many things that are taken on by Hollywood, the truth of the story has likely been somewhat replaced by the movie version of events. After a while, the two will blend together and create a whole new story as well. Number 16. Jason Barnum it takes a special kind of individual to go ahead and tattoo their face. That's a particularly robust sense of certainty that you would have to have. But what about tattooing your eyeball? What kind of crazy does that really take? Well, you could ask Jason Barnum, but you should also be careful, because it seems as though the man might be a teeny bit unpredictable. He's covered in tattoos across his face, head, and neck, some of which feature rather tasteless Nazi symbols and so he's probably not a person that any of us should mess with. Barnum came to the attention of the tabloid media when he would be arrested at the scene of an attempted murder of a police officer after they had been investigating him for a string of burglaries in Anchorage, Alaska. He would then be tried and sentenced to 22 years for his crimes. What a fun one! Tattooed eyeballs, attempted murder, and white supremacy are a particular combination of things that would indicate that the man has made some poor choices in his life. But who knows? Perhaps 22 years to ponder his decision-making process might alter his perspective. Or, you know, maybe not. Number 15. Nico Jenkins Nico Jenkins is a name that evokes both fear and intrigue. Born in 1986, Jenkins gained notoriety for his violent crimes and disturbing behavior. His story, well, it's a chilling reminder of the complexities of the human psyche. In 2013, he shocked the nation with a series of gruesome murders in Omaha, Nebraska. Motivated by a twisted ideology and the voices that he was claiming to hear, Jenkins targeted four individuals, brutally ending their lives. His crimes would send shockwaves through the community, garnering significant media attention. But what made Jenkins' case so particularly intriguing would be his claims of having been controlled by an ancient Egyptian serpent god, which he believed had directed his actions. This would add an eerie and surreal element to an already horrific story. Jenkins' mental state and history of violence had raised questions about the criminal justice system's ability to identify and treat individuals with severe mental illness. His case also highlighted the challenges that are faced by authorities in assessing and managing such individuals. After his arrest, Jenkins would be convicted and sentenced to death. However, his case has since faced some legal challenges in regards to his competency to stand trial. But what do you think? How insane is insane enough to not be criminally responsible. Let me know all about it in the comments down below. Number 14. Frank Lucas Frank Lucas was a notorious figure in the world of organized crime during the late 20th century. Born in 1930 in North Carolina, Lucas rose to prominence as a drug lord in Harlem, New York City during the 1960s and 70s. Lucas had gained notoriety for his unique approach to drug trafficking, having smuggled high-quality heroin directly from Southeast Asia, particularly from the infamous Golden Triangle region, and bypassing traditional routes that were controlled by the Italian-American Mafia. Show great love, you know what it is, it's all about respect, I respect everything he's done and what he is. By cutting out the middleman and overseeing every step of the supply chain, Lucas was able to offer a more pure product at a much lower price, effectively undercutting his competitors. His empire would rapidly grow, and he became known for his extravagant lifestyle, often seen sporting expensive furs and driving luxury cars. However, his success would also attract the attention of law enforcement, and in 1975, he would be arrested and charged 
with various drug-related offenses. Lucas would eventually strike a deal with the authorities, providing valuable information about corrupt law enforcement officials and other drug operations. This would lead to the downfall of several individuals and agencies involved in drug trafficking, and in return, Lucas received a reduced sentence and was released from prison in the 1980s. His life, along with his criminal exploits, would be depicted in the 2007 film American Gangster, starring Denzel Washington as Frank Lucas. The movie highlighted Lucas's rise to power, his eventual downfall, and the dogged pursuit of justice by Detective Richie Roberts, portrayed by Russell Crowe. Frank Lucas's story is a regular old tale of crime, ambition, and the complexities of the drug trade, and while his criminal activities were undeniably illegal and harmful, he also played a major part in dismantling corrupt networks, so you know it's not all black and white in the world of crime. Number 13. Eileen Wuornos The notorious American serial killer Eileen Wuornos probably became so well-known only as a result of the 2003 biographical movie Monster, which told the story of her killing spree to her eventual execution. You might know it, the one where Charlize Theron gained 30 pounds, shaved off her eyebrows, and wore some bad teeth, thus making it an Oscar-winning performance. Here's a top tip. The best way to get an Oscar? Be beautiful in real life and make yourself ugly for a role. Ta-da! Best actor ever. Who ever said that Hollywood was shallow? It worked for Brendan Fraser. Anyways, Warnos had a pretty tough time of life in general before embarking on the murder fest that would ultimately lead to her capture and death. Every time I started writing something, it went up higher. So I'm thinking that probably had the TV rig. She shot dead and robbed seven men between 1989 and 1990. There's a gray area with all of that since the first killing was committed in self-defense when she was violently raped by a man. After this, she would commit six more killings, all of which she later claimed were the result of men attempting to rape her. As a sex worker, she was immediately treated poorly by not only the men who hired her services, but also by all of the institutions that were involved in her subsequent arrest and incarceration. This is not to excuse all the killing, but it is worth saying. Eileen Wuornos was found guilty of six murders and then sentenced to death. She was executed by lethal injection after spending 12 years on death row in Florida. Number 12. Jamie Asuna Jamie Asuna is an individual who gained infamy for his gruesome and heinous crimes. Born in 1975, Asuna's name became synonymous with brutality and depravity. In 2011, he would commit a horrifying act that would shock the community of Bakersfield, California. That's when he brutally murdered and dismembered his cellmate at Corcoran State Prison. The details of the crime were disturbing and gruesome, demonstrating a level of violence that is difficult to even comprehend. Asuna's crimes did not end there, though. In 2017, while awaiting trial for the murder of his cellmate, he then shocked the courtroom by cutting off his own ears with a makeshift razor blade. This action would be seen as an extreme attempt to manipulate the legal proceedings and also gain attention. All throughout the legal process, he exhibited erratic behavior, making it challenging for the authorities to fully comprehend his motives and his state of mind. His actions have raised questions about mental health within the prison system and the capacity of individuals to commit such acts of extreme violence. Number 11. Shashikala Ramesh Patankar this woman has had quite the criminal career. Known as Baby, the middle-aged drug dealer is well known in Mumbai's drug circuit and has made her choice of work extremely lucrative indeed. Yes, this woman has believed to have been worth about a bazillion dollars by the time that she was ultimately apprehended. Basically, she was a drug dealer without any kind of particular moral code whatsoever and seemed to have been wanted for dealing all of the drugs and then some that you've probably never even heard of. In addition to all of that, apparently she may have done a murder, so she just sounds utterly delightful then. After years of doing all the criming, she would then eventually be arrested by the Mumbai police in 2015. Number 10. Al Capone Al Capone is also known as Scarface and was a legendary figure in the world of organized crime during the Prohibition era of the 1920s. With his stylish suits, cigar in hand, and an aura of mystery, Al Capone became an enduring icon in popular culture. 
Born in 1899 in Brooklyn, New York, Capone rose to prominence as the head of the Chicago Outfit, a powerful criminal organization involved in bootlegging, gambling, and other illicit activities. His empire thrived during the Prohibition era, when the production and sale of alcohol would be banned, and that led to a lucrative black market for booze. Capone's reputation for violence, along with his ability to evade law enforcement, had earned him a fearsome reputation. However, he would also be known for his charm and charisma, making him a favorite subject of the media and the public. One of the most infamous events associated with Capone would be the St. Valentine's Day Massacre in 1929. While he was not directly involved, the incident did involve the murder of seven members of a rival gang, further solidifying his ruthless image. Capone's criminal activities would eventually catch up to him, though, and in 1931, he would be convicted of tax evasion and then sentenced to prison. Interestingly, it was his inability to pay taxes rather than his heinous crimes that would lead to his downfall. Despite all of his criminal activities, Al Capone continues to be a source of fascination for many. His larger-than-life personality and the aura of mystique that surrounds him have made him an enduring symbol of the Prohibition era and the allure of organized crime. Number 9. Pablo Escobar Pablo Escobar was a notorious Colombian drug lord and leader of the Medellin cartel. He rose to power in the 1970s and 1980s, becoming one of the wealthiest and most powerful criminals in history. Known for his ruthless tactics, Escobar would be involved in drug trafficking, violence, and corruption, and his illicit activities had a significant impact upon Colombian society. This would lead to widespread violence and instability, and Escobar's reign would eventually come to an end in 1993 when he was killed by Colombian authorities. His life, along with his criminal empire, continue to captivate the public's fascination and are often depicted in popular culture. Escobar was such a successful criminal that he's believed to have been worth 30 billion United States dollars by the time that he had died in 1993. Apparently, it would be the equivalent of 70 billion in today's money. That's just wild, but perhaps it's also a more honest version of becoming a billionaire. You know they're all doing something exploitative, don't you? Escobar, well, he was just openly doing all the crimes. Number 8. Susan Edith Sachs Susan Edith Sachs was a member of the radical organization known as the Weather Underground, which was involved in protests against the Vietnam War and advocated for revolutionary change. Sachs's involvement in activism took a rather dramatic turn in 1970 when she participated in an armed robbery of a bank in Brighton, Massachusetts. The robbery would result in the death of a police officer, and Sachs went into hiding, becoming one of the most wanted fugitives in the United States. As a student at a university, Sachs was a young radical who had escaped from a bank robbery along with Catherine Ann Power, Stanley Ray Bond, and two ex-convicts by the name of Robert Valeri and William Gilday. It would be Gilday who had shot and killed the police officer during the escape. Sachs then went on the run for the next five years until eventually being caught in Philadelphia. The FBI had issued a photograph of her and she was immediately recognized being arrested that very same day. She then went on trial and ended up serving seven years in prison. Number seven, Dennis Lynn Rader. One of the most depraved serial killers in history, Dennis Rader gave himself the moniker of BTK, which stands for Bind, Torture, Kill. He killed 10 people between the years of 1974 and 1991 in Wichita and Park City, Kansas. Rader took great enjoyment from writing long and detailed accounts of the terrible things that he had done and would send these letters to the police and newspapers. He took a break from sending those letters for 10 years, but clearly, missing the attention, he then resumed his campaign of taunting in 2004. This was ultimately to be his undoing, as it led to his arrest in 2005. Now, I'm not going to detail what this person did to his victims, as that is precisely what he wants everyone to do, and that is what all the letter writing was about. He would be arrested following the sending of writings to police on a floppy disk, the police found metadata that was embedded in a deleted file on the disk, and that gave them a clue as to where he may be found. Christ Lutheran Church, and a quick internet search would give them the name Dennis Rader as the president of the church council. They looked into him and found that he had a vehicle that matched one that had been spotted at one of the crime scenes, and that's when they found a way to get some DNA to match against the evidence that they had. 
The police would obtain a warrant to test for a familial match with a medical sample of his daughter, and they finally had enough to arrest him. He would then be charged with 10 counts of first-degree murder and sentenced to 10 consecutive life sentences to serve a minimum of 175 years. Number 6. Roy Gardner Roy Gardner, known as the Great Outlaw, was an intriguing character from the early 20th century who gained notoriety as a train robber and prison escape artist. His daring exploits and ability to elude authorities captivated the public's imagination during the height of the Wild West era. Born in 1884 in Missouri, Gardner turned to a life of crime at a young age. He had embarked on a series of train robberies, targeting express shipments, and evading capture through his cunning and audacity. His notoriety grew as he successfully executed several high-profile heists, earning him a reputation as a master thief. However, Gardner's life of crime came to an end in 1921 when he was apprehended and sentenced to life in prison. While incarcerated at McNeil Island Penitentiary, he devised an audacious plan to escape, making him famous once again. In 1927, he successfully broke out of prison by scaling a wall and swimming across the icy waters of Puget Sound to freedom. This escape would make headlines all across the nation, adding to his legendary status, but unfortunately for Gardner, his freedom would be short-lived. He was recaptured after three months on the run and then sent back to prison. Despite his subsequent attempts to escape, he was never able to replicate the success of his first breakout. Gardner's life has been immortalized in books and films, perpetuating his image as a charismatic and daring outlaw. His story represents the romanticized notion of the Wild West and the allure of a life that's lived on the fringes of society. Roy Gardner remains an intriguing figure whose exploits continue to fascinate people to this day. Number 5. Brenda Delgado Brenda Delgado made it onto this list of notorious female criminals by way of plotting and executing murder in 2015. Her victim was to be Kendra Hatcher, who had the misfortune to be the new girlfriend of Brenda's ex, and she was not going to let that go so lightly. Honestly, it sounds super twisted to begin with, but the elaborate scheme that she had hatched made it even more awful. After she broke up with Ricardo, known as Ricky, she then became completely obsessive. When Ricky began dating Kendra Hatcher, Delgado started to stalk them both, and the stalking turned murderous when she decided to plot the death of Kendra. And so, she hired a hitman to murder the poor girl. Hatcher would be followed to the garage of her apartment building in Dallas by the hitman, named Christopher Love, where he shot her dead. Brenda was first connected to the killing when a black jeep that she had borrowed from a friend had been seen in CCTV footage from the crime scene. After going on the run in Mexico, she was eventually caught by investigators and sentenced to life in prison. Her co-conspirators, the hitman and the getaway driver, were both sentenced to death, and 35 years respectively. Number 4. Ruya Ignatova As founder of what is known as one of the biggest scams in history, Ruya Ignatova is not only a bad person, but she also might be an evil genius. This Bulgarian-born German has been accused of multiple counts of fraud for her scheme that involved the creation of a fake cryptocurrency, which was called OneCoin. And despite her infamy and highly publicized criminal activity, she's actually been on the run since 2017. She is on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted list and has been there since June of 2022, and she's been pushed across the globe by many different international law enforcement agencies, but somehow has continued to evade capture. Having a huge wad of cash probably helps with disappearing into the ether, I would imagine. There's a top tip for all of you would-be international fugitives. Just make sure that whatever crime you do makes you a massive pile of cash, so you can hide forevermore in the loving and cash-welcoming embrace of the global criminal underworld. But, you know, <laughs> don't quote me on that, because I'm not partaking in your crimes, and I'm not going to be held accountable for your legal activities. All right, very good, let's move swiftly on. Number 3. Shanika Minor Shanika S. Minor, an American criminal, gained notoriety for her involvement in a tragic crime where she shot and killed a pregnant woman. This heinous action led to her inclusion on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list, 
and in June of 2016, her name would be added to the list for her alleged crimes of first-degree intentional homicide, first-degree intentional homicide of an unborn child, and unlawful flight to avoid prosecution. This would mark her as the 10th female to ever be placed on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. In the end, Miner would be sentenced to 30 years in prison, as well as 10 years of extended supervision for the murders. Number 2. Marie Dean Arrington Back in 1969, Marie Dean Arrington became only the second woman to ever be placed on the FBI's 10 Most Wanted Fugitives list. Arrington had been sentenced to death for the murder of Vivian Ritter, who was a legal secretary for the public defender who had represented Arrington's children in a case. The public defender had been unsuccessful in their representation of the two on felony charges, and Arrington had seemingly sought revenge. She had been placed in prison while awaiting her execution, but had managed to escape by cutting a screen window and getting out while wearing pajamas. This is when she made it onto the list, and after finally being caught again in 1972, she would be given a further 10 years on her sentence, and her death sentence was commuted to life in prison. She died aged 80 years old in 2014 in the very same correctional facility from which she had escaped all those years before. Number 1. Arturo Beltran Leyva Arturo Beltran Leyva was a notorious Mexican drug lord who was a prominent figure in the world of organized crime. Born in 1961 in Sinaloa, Mexico, he became the leader of the Beltran Leyva drug cartel, which was known for its involvement in drug trafficking and violence. Beltran Leyva and his brothers would establish a powerful criminal organization that rivaled other prominent cartels in Mexico, such as the Sinaloa and the Gulf cartels, and they controlled lucrative drug routes, engaging in a wide range of criminal activities, which included drug smuggling, money laundering, and corruption. But what set him apart was his reputation for extreme violence. He was known for his ruthlessness and willingness to eliminate his rivals and even law enforcement officials who had stood in his way. Leva's cartel was responsible for numerous killings and acts of violence, contributing to the escalating drug-related violence in Mexico. In 2009, a significant blow would be dealt to his cartel when he was killed during a shootout with Mexican Marines. His death would mark a major victory in the Mexican government and its war against drug cartels, although violence in the country continues to persist. Arturo Beltran Leyva's legacy represents the dark side of the drug trade and the brutal reality of organized crime. Well, let's hope that we don't all have nightmares after that rundown of hideous criminals. Which of these dangerous prisoners is going to keep you awake tonight? As always, you can let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. Check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.